All right, here's our video today. The woman without fear, patient SM. And she's called patient SM because, well, they don't want to give her real name. And so the researchers, the doctors, labeled her patient SM. We don't even know what that stands for. But she's the woman without fear, and she has no fear because she's missing her amygdala in the brain. And we'll talk about that, what the amygdala does. I'm sure we heard of the man without fear, right? Daredevil. Daredevil is uh, 1964, created by Stan Lee himself and Bill Everett. And maybe Jack Kirby. They say maybe Jack Kirby added things to that. But So Daredevil 64, we know that the woman without fear, she's 65, I think. I think some people say that she's she's about 57 years old today. And she has a rare disease. She has urbach weathy disease. I'll spell it. Get my pen going here. All right, so it's Urbach. Seems like they can make a better name for this, right? Urbach weathy That's the disease, and what it does is it starts destroying the amygdala. And without the amygdala, you will have no fear. You won't detect danger. So let's look at some of those things. All right, and maybe this is the woman without fear. We don't know what she looks like. We don't even know her name. We know she's from Kentucky, but maybe this picture with AI generated, maybe she could be the woman without fear. Who knows? Does she look like she has fear? Maybe, maybe not. And there's the man without fear, just hanging out. Another AI generated image, just looking at the sky. The man from Hell's Kitchen. Anyway, let's talk about the amygdala. So there's the amygdala, and we'll circle it over there. Oh, there we go. Back to the woman. Let's go back. Again, that's not the picture of the woman at all. All right, so that little thing over there in our brain that processes our emotions and our fears is the amygdala. And without it, you will not experience fear. It's kind of, kind of dangerous if we don't have the amygdala. And the woman without fear, patient SM, her amygdala deteriorated because of the disease, urbach weathy disease, which I mentioned. So what happens basically when you have a dangerous situation, let's say a lion's attacking you for some reason, who knows why, or you're just in some real dangerous situa uh, situation, so your amygdala is going gonna, is gonna to talk to the hypothalamus over here. It's going to send signals to the hypothalamus, another small little part of your brain. And the hypothalamus is going to release certain hormones. And these hormones I'm sure you're familiar with is adrenaline. Put that over here. And, of course, uh, we call it adrenaline, but it's, it also goes by epinephrine. Most medical researchers will say epinephrine. So you can say epinephrine if you want. And adrenaline obviously will create a, a lot of conditions. Like, for example, it'll make your heart beat faster. So your heart beats faster. Your blood pressure increases. There's more oxygen. There's more O2. We breathe O2. So there's more oxygen being pumped into your lungs. And all this gives you a hyper sense of alertness, right? Your, all your senses are on overdrive. So you see better, you smell better. That's what happens with adrenaline or epinephrine. And that's, again, the amygdala right over here, sending signals to the hypothalamus. Also, cortisol is also released. And what cortisol does is it actually goes into the, your stored energy, your glucose. Remember, if you do remember, if you do recall from my other videos, glucose is used as our primary sugar source, right? Our primary energy, we need glucose. Whatever we eat, we convert it to glucose. And so we have glucose energy reserves and hypothalamus will activate cortisol and cortisol will get those energy reserves. So now we have more energy and we're more alert and we can do things that perhaps we couldn't do normally. And so if your amygdala isn't running right, if it's not working, in this case with patient SM, she doesn't have an amygdala deteriorated, so she's not experiencing any of this. 
So if she sees a tiger coming at her, she's not going to be afraid. And when researchers, uh, researchers did a lot of investigation on her, they found that she was held at knife point and gun point. She comes from a poor area and a very crime-ridden area. So she's been in many situations where you would have been afraid, but she has not. She just doesn't care. Well, we didn't say she doesn't care. She just doesn't experience the fear. Again, she was approached with gunpoint, knife point. She's been shown spiders and snakes that most people would be afraid of or even shrink away from, but she doesn't show any signs of urgency, no desperation, no sweating. I mean, she has emotions, though. You know, let's not confuse the fact that she, she doesn't have fear, but she does have emotions. In fact, she does have a normal IQ. She has a good memory. And uh, but and she, thing is, she doesn't show fear, or she can't sh see fear in others. Now we'll go back to the picture. We'll pretend that this is the patient SM, just so we have something to look at. So again, she has a good memory. She has a good IQ, normal, normal IQ. Just no fear. She can't process fear. In fact, she doesn't really process emotions too well. She doesn't understand physical space. So she could approach you. She could look you. She could look a stranger in the eyes. In fact, she can come nose to nose with a stranger, and would not think there was anything wrong with that. She wouldn't feel any discomfort from it, like we would. Now she does get angry, right? So there's a difference between anger and fear. She does get angry, but if you know, if these two people, if, if one of these persons was patient F SM, she wouldn't show any emotions about it. She wouldn't have a problem with being nose to nose or eye to eye like this but we would you know we're looking at this picture and we can see well there's some con confrontation going on here right we can see it in their expressions patient sm wouldn't be able to understand those expressions you know to us on halloween we think of ghost stories and horror stories it has no effect on patient sm now again she is friendly she's very outgoing she may be a little too friendly but she has no fear. She can't process the emotions of fear, even though she can be angry. So her amygdala, remember we showed you that a little tiny amygdala in your brain, your brain is totally calcified. That's what happened with this disease. And they, they've done research with rats and monkeys. And when they've done research with monkeys, now monkeys will never go near a snake. But monkeys who don't have their amygdala, they'll walk right up to a snake which patient SM has done. She's walked up to snakes, even though she said she's afraid of them, she's just walked right up to them. And spiders. Imagine, you know, we all have this reaction when we're walking at night, maybe we go into a spider web and we all freak out. And, but if patient SM walked into a spider web, she wouldn't care. And um, when they've showed her spiders, when she was holding a spider and they asked her, you know, aren't you afraid of spiders? And she, she might say yes while she's looking at the spider in her hand and not feeling the fear. And she'll be a little perplexed why she's holding it, even though she thinks she's afraid of it, but shows no fear. That's a strange part of that disease. So again, this anonymous woman from Kentucky with this herbac wheaty disease has no fear. She's the woman without fear. And that's our video today.